Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for joining us. Our top story today at noon, a deadly terror attack in Turkey. At least 41 people were killed, hundreds more injured as three suicide bombers attacked the main international airport in Istanbul. No Americans are among the named victims. We've learned the three terrorists arrived at the airport by taxi with bombs and assault rifles. ABC's Marcy Gonzalez joins us live from New York with more on the story and a warning. Some of the, about what you're about to see may be disturbing. And today that airport, which is one of the busiest in the world, is back open after the attack. Some of the horror and carnage was captured on camera. New video of the terror inside Istanbul's international terminal appearing to show airport security footage as one of the bombs goes off. The blast during the final days of Ramadan sending panicked passengers running. People were shooting on one side and we all ran the other way. And then the bombs went off and people were started running the other way and there's more shooting. In this video, one of the three attackers appears to hit the ground, shot by police, gunfire tearing through the terminal. It was a few minutes that he was spraying and it was nonstop, uh, automatic rifles for sure. Before another massive explosion. Then a third bomb detonated outside of the airport as people waited for taxis and to greet loved ones. In all, more than 40 people killed, including the three attackers. More than 200 other people injured. I saw people falling when I was coming down the steps. There was blood. Though no group has claimed responsibility yet. Turkey's prime minister believes ISIS was behind the attack. And in response, there is increased security at some airports in the U.S. This, like the attack in Brussels, again raises questions over whether secondary security checkpoints are needed outside of American airports. Live in New York, Marcy Gonzalez, ABC News. Now back to you. All right, Marcy, thank you. Some of those increased security measures are being seen right here at our own airport on the Sun Coast. Travelers going in and out of Sarasota Bradenton International Airport are seeing more officers on patrol today. ABC 7's Adam Cellini joins us live from the airport with more on the story. Adam? Yeah, Scott, it's, it's tough to tell right now how many immediate changes will come from strictly this Istanbul attack, but it's tough to tell how many changes are needed here at the Sarasota Bradenton International Airport. Really, they've spent the last few years, for lack of a better term, fortifying this airport against any terrorist threats. Earlier, we spoke with Airport Director Rick Piccolo, who tells us that really San Bernardino is what sparked many of the improvements here. And then the incident in Brussels, the incident in Istanbul, Turkey, confirming kind of the the fears and, and uneasiness the management had here. He tells us they've spent about $250,000 since San Bernardino in training improvements. That's training to their police department they have here on site and also just the staff for mass shootings, bomb threats, really any terrorist attacks. They, all, they also now have 115 cameras installed around the premises and they've treated much of the glass around the front of the airport here with a bomb proof film to prevent any shattering and, and spraying of glass and, and further in injuries. Um, they've also increased the firepower for their police department, investing in longer guns, as uh, Rick Piccolo put it, more assault rifles. And to that point, they've added one tactical officer to patrol the whole airport all day, every day. He's armed with an assault rifle and body armor. Many of the passengers here get a look at that person, and they, um, they took some time today to tell us what it was like to see someone walking around with an assault rifle while they're traveling. Here's what they had to say. Uh, since I knew this is a smaller, smaller airport, uh, I felt more secure. Larger airports, uh, I have a little bit of concern getting into Charlotte, so I hope security there will be good. No, no, it makes me feel good <laughs> knowing that this airport is protected, you know, by them. Atlanta passenger, Carlisle, please return to the Delta ticket. I feel secure with them around. So you'd rather... So we're constantly looking at what we're doing because the threat keeps evolving so quickly and it's an issue that we as an airport have to look at Now, one change that did come here as well is their uh, police department that we mentioned earlier, and it is a police department, not just a security team. They received a big accreditation that most other municipal police departments have here in the state of Florida. They are the first airport police department in the state to receive this level of accreditation. It means their training, their protocols are all on a very, very high standard. By um, And our, our state alone has a high standard for accreditation throughout the nation. So that should, be, that should cause some ease for travelers 
sailors coming in and out of Sarasota. We'll have more on that in our evening shows later today. For now, live in Sarasota, I'm Adam Cellini. Scott, back to you in the studio. All right, Adam, thank you so much. We have uh, new details today on a SWAT standoff in a Sarasota neighborhood yesterday. Sarasota County Sheriff's investigators say 27-year-old Brandon Horkera took his own life in that standoff. The Bradenton man has an extensive criminal history. Investigators say he barricaded in himself inside a home on Silk Oak Drive after deputies attempted to serve two warrants for his arrest. Deputies say Horkera pointed a gun at them and said he refused to go back to jail. After six hours, SWAT members entered the home and found him dead. Hundreds of neighbors were kept from their homes throughout the afternoon during that standoff. It's just a shock. I mean, everybody's always quiet. They are quiet here. And I mean, I've lived here for 40 years and never any problems. Orcara's criminal history includes 14 felonies and 20 misdemeanor charges in Florida and more charges in Utah and Indiana. Manatee County Sheriff's detectives are investigating whether a skimming device was placed on a bank ATM. They say a customer reported seeing a possible skimmer at a SunTrust bank in Lakewood Ranch Boulevard. Some skimmers can steal your financial information from your credit or debit cards. Sheriff's detectives continue to investigate this possible skimming device. The recent expansion of the Panama Canal is having a positive impact here on the Sun Coast. A Port Manatee trade executive says the expansion will allow for increased cargo through the port. Port Manatee is the closest deep water seaport to the canal in the U.S. With the expansion, port officials expect to see more smaller vessels move cargo through the area. The boost in shipments could lead to an increase in jobs. With the canal expansion, the trade embargo lifted in Cuba, port officials expect cargo projects to double over the next decade. The port already brings in more than $2 billion to the local economy. A new grant is helping the Venice Marine Patrol keep boaters safe out on the water. The Sea Tow Foundation awarding the patrol a loaner station that will offer life, life jackets to boaters who don't have one or don't have the right size. Boaters will be able to borrow these life-saving devices from the station at the Venice Avenue boat ramp. Venice will be the only city in the area that has this kind of station. It will be monitored by Marine Patrol and Sea Tow Venice. The station will be up and running by Friday. Children and adults with special needs treated to a day on the water this morning. The friendliest catch fishing tourney is part of the Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix Festival. Area charter boat captains, law enforcement, and other volunteers donating their time and expertise to make this an unforgettable morning. We asked the event organizers what it means to host this event every year. It gives them a day out of their routine, something they normally wouldn't get to do. And I think it's basically just, just fun for them for a day. It's all about them. This is the 32nd year of the tourney. After a morning of fishing, the children were given awards, goodie bags, and then treated to a delicious lunch. And the Grand Prix festivities continue tonight with a fan fest at Fleming Steakhouse. That happens from 5 to 9. On Friday, the public will have a chance to meet the drivers in this year's races with a meet and greet at the Hyatt Regency Ballroom. That happens from noon until 2. And then that evening, the Boats on Main Downtown Block Party will be held on Main Street from 6 to 11 p.m. with live music by Luna Blue. The racing, by the way, begins Saturday off Lido Key and continues on Sunday. It should be a fun weekend. Uh, maybe be on the water or on the beach, whichever way you choose to watch the races. Those, That's right. Those boats go by, well, some of them, well over 100 miles an hour. They, uh, you know, I went to go see the races once upon a time, and I remember seeing these boats in the water. It was very difficult to get a gauge of how fast they're going, number one, and who's in the race. And sometimes it's difficult to tell, but it's fascinating yeah. to watch, isn't Just it? Just the sound of it alone is pretty oh, amazing. It's powerful yeah. stuff. It's yeah. powerful. Powerful stuff. Well, we're going to see that 50% chance of rain over the weekend. Yep. So some of us will get rain and others of us will not get rain. It's going to be very typical out there. 88 degrees for us right now. Our humidity is moving up to 61%. The winds are coming in right off the Gulf of Mexico, but we've got plenty of sunshine outside right now. And as you can see all around our viewing area, no 90s yet, but we're all getting very close to 90 degrees at this hour. We've been seeing the rainfall developing 
happening around the state of Florida. And as you can see, we're getting a few more showers now starting to form around a low-pressure trough that's located out in the Gulf of Mexico over the northern Gulf just off the Louisiana coastline. For our area, we had some pop-up showers and thunderstorms early this morning. Those have now dissipated, and we're beginning to see those showers developing well inland. And that was exactly what we thought was going to take place throughout the day, and that's what's going on. We'll see a daytime high of 90 degrees, only a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain for the rest of the day. All right, Wendy, thank you. The Manatee County School District has set quite a record in the fight against summer hunger. This morning, the district serving its one millionth free summer meal. So far this summer, the district has served about 6,000 meals each day. The summer food program began back in 2008, and as part of the program, all children under the age of 18 are offered free breakfast, lunch, or snacks during the week. Meanwhile, some changes are on the way for the school district next school year. During a workshop yesterday, the Manatee County School Board proposing changes to how high school students can enroll in college-level courses. With more students opting out of standardized tests, the board decided to give school principals more discretion in deciding if students can take these college-level courses, overriding the testing requirement. Students who meet district requirements and take the test will not need the principal's input. The board will vote on the proposal at the end of next month. Work is set to begin soon on demolishing the former Manatee Technical College campus. During yesterday's meeting, board members also approved spending $1.5 million to begin the demolition of most of the buildings there. Two of the buildings will be left on campus, which are used as a firing range for law enforcement and then an equipment storage area. The district still wants to keep the property for educational purposes, which could include building a new elementary school there one day. Time to get over to the kitchen and check in for the first time with our culinary director, Judy Gallagher. Hi, Judy. What's, what are you cooking for us today? Scott, I have some great fresh produce for you. I had a delivery yesterday right at my doorstep from White Picket Produce, and I'm so thrilled because they now are carrying all natural chickens, eggs. There's so many new things. So aside from all their great vegetables, you're going to be able to get more of the protein that you want to make a complete meal. So today I'm going to make a Moroccan roast chicken, lots of lemon. You don't necessarily have to have preserved lemon. If you are able to either make it or buy it, that's even better. But we're going to marinate the chicken overnight in yogurt, Greek yogurt. We're going to season it up with lots of seasonings and it's a great weekend to clean out my my spice cabinet so I'm going to make my own kind of little intriguing spice mix. I'm going to show you how to roast the vegetables with the chicken or we can simply saute depending if you're going to grill the chicken outside or roast it inside. Many different options so stay with me throughout the hour. Moroccan chicken and fresh vegetables from White Picket Produce coming up. On your TV. On your computer. On your camera on your smartphone, on your Apple Watch. And now you can get ABC7, your Suncoast News on Fire TV. Just go to mysuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab for a list of fast and free downloads that deliver ABC7, your Suncoast News on the go. At ABC7, our entire weathercast is dedicated to the Suncoast, and now we bring it to you like never before with the all-new official Suncoast forecast. Beach and boating forecast. The winds will be out of the northwest at 10 knots. Now, with the most advanced graphics and technology, we bring you weather where you live, pinpointing right down to your neighborhood. Zooming into the Sarasota Bayfront, the all-new official Suncoast forecast, only on ABC7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. ABC7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you, weeknights at 5. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal. For a comfortable night's sleep with same day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. 
Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. We've been slow smoking over oak for more than 45 years. And while sticking to tried and true traditions is kind of our thing, it doesn't hurt to throw something new in the smoker every now and then. Come get some slow smoked chicken wings at Sunnet Barbecue. Order them as an appetizer or as part of a combo with pork, baby back ribs, or both. Starting at $10.99, Sunnet Barbecue, local pitmasters in 68. So we're starting to see a few more showers beginning to form primarily across the northern sections of the Gulf of Mexico. We've got a low pressure area right here, and that's what's helping to trigger some of these showers across the northern sections of the Gulf. They're going to stay to our north. They're not expected to come on in here. And early this morning, we had some showers that developed along the coastal section. So that was a little unusual for us. We haven't seen that in the last couple of days. And right now, we're beginning to see those showers popping up across the central part of the state. And you can see some of them are on the heavier side as well. They're moving on up towards the north and east because we're getting the winds coming in off the coastline and that's helping to push those showers on towards the north and east at this hour. The rains that are out here in the Gulf of Mexico are pretty well falling apart, but we did have some coastal showers that began to show up. And we're gonna start to see more and more of this rain now beginning to pop up. Just all of a sudden it's in place and in some cases it's dry, dying off very quickly. The dew point levels are also quite high. So when you see this combination, it usually is going to be a signal that we are going to continue to see rain developing across the region. We're seeing a lot of these dew points at the 75 degree mark, a little bit less in Sarasota immediately at the airport, but otherwise most locations are reporting 74 to 76 degrees dew point wise at this point. 88 right now at the airport. We're looking at fair skies all around that region with our humidity at 61%, but those winds are coming in right off the Gulf of Mexico, so it's allowing for a very sticky feel out there. And as you can see, we've got temperatures in the 90s in some locations across the state of Florida. Tallahassee, Jacksonville reporting 90 degrees right now. Everybody else is in the 80s, and our viewing area Normally, we're, we've been seeing some temperatures in the 90s at this hour, but that's not happening right now. Our temperature readings, for the most part, the highest is in Northport at 88, Sarasota at 88 degrees, and Mayaca City at 88. And so the rest of us all seeing temperatures very close to that, 85 to 87 degrees. High pressure is what's dominating our weather right now, and that high pressure system is sinking on down to the south. That's allowing for this westerly w wind coming on in, and that is what helped to set up these showers earlier this morning. So they were right along the coastline, and now we're starting to see those pop-up showers over the central part of the state, and they're being pushed away by these winds that are coming in off the Gulf of Mexico. Now, tomorrow morning, we're also going to see the coastal showers. The same setup is going to be in place, so we'll get those rains developing in the morning hours, just as we saw this morning. Then we'll get the afternoon inland showers, which is what's going on right now. The same thing is going to happen again tomorrow. And we're going to keep our rain chances at 20 to 30 percent for both today and tomorrow. Highs will be in the 90s. They are expected to get up that high. And as you can see around the area right now, we've got those showers that are beginning to form. That's going to be taking place throughout the afternoon hours, mostly moving off towards the north and east. Then tomorrow morning, we start to see those rain showers developing right along the coastline again. And then they'll start their uh, formation over the central part of the state once again for tomorrow and push off towards the east. So that's what we'll be experiencing over the next 24 to 48 hour period. In the meantime, over the next several days, we're looking at our temperatures to stay right around that 90 degree mark, overnight lows in the 70s, with a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain through Thursday. Scott? All right, Wendy, thank you. June is National Men's Health Month. ABC 7's Alex Redman breaks down the most common medical conditions affecting men's health.
If you are a man, you have a 50-50 lifetime risk of heart disease from age 40 on, says cardiologist and concierge Dr. Daniel Cooper. If men get diagnosed earlier and risk factors be addressed earlier, you may be able to really prevent heart disease and reduce the, evident, the events of heart attacks. Heart disease is the number one cause of male death in the U.S. Men usually in their 40s and 50s are usually extremely busy, they're successful in their careers, they have high anxiety. Blood pressure is one of the main reasons people can develop heart disease and suffer heart attacks, explains Dr. Cooper. Simply by modifying risk factors, you may be able to prevent an unexpected heart attack in your 40s and 50s. Between ages 60 and 79, coronary heart disease affects men twice as much as women, and after that it goes up exponentially. Young men are often very healthy, um, but we have risk factors in terms of lifestyle. Fourth year med student Jeff Wunderlich says that he's noticed in his experience that men don't seem to take care of themselves as well as women when it comes to going to the doctor. The solution is to take care of yourself and make a schedule and be efficient and um, that'll lead to a longer life. The CDC finds cancer the second leading cause of death in men in the U.S. Prostate cancer is age-related, difficult to, to uh, uh, prevent. I mean, there's been some thought that perhaps decreasing uh, caloric intake, avoiding fatty foods, exogenous hormones, the, the administration of testosterone I think is dangerous. Colon cancer can't be prevented, but the CDC finds early detection saves lives. Start prevention health screenings at age 50 or earlier. I think a real big uh, issue is, has to do with lung cancer, which is the second most common deadly form of, of uh, cancer in men. And that's almost completely tobacco related. Over 90% of cases of uh, lung cancer in men is related to the use of tobacco products. And it's something which is completely preventable. Reporting in Sarasota, Alex Redmond, ABC7, your Suncoast News. Alex, thank you. What many kids consider summer fun is causing concern for consumer watchdogs. Kiddie pools, hoverboards, trampolines, and toy guns are all included in this year's list of hazardous summer toys. World Against Toys Causing Harm, or WATCH, presented its annual report at Boston Children's Hospital. The summer months account for nearly half of all injury-related deaths to children, and more than 2.5 million children are injured in accidents each summer. So be careful out there. Still to come in your Suncoast News, Uber is looking to keep a closer eye on the driving habits of their employees. We'll show you how they're using some smartphones to improve safety. That story coming up. Day at four on Suncoast View. It's summer blockbuster season at the movies. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. Our film critic joins us to rate the top new summer releases. Work can definitely stress us out, so we learned some workplace-appropriate yoga stretches that you can do at your desk. We'll be celebrating Shark Week, and Chef Judy has the best fish sandwiches right here on the Sun Coast. Today at 4 on Sun Coast View. Well, hurricane season is here, and we'll make sure you're prepared. Watch our hurricane special on our ABC7 app and all our live streaming platforms. Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. is the best starting line a Florida student could have. Since earning my degree at the University of Florida, I've gone on to be a NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Rookie of the Year and a team owner in the NASCAR k and Pro Series. Thanks to the Florida Lottery, many more students will be off to the races with a brighter future. The Florida Lottery, just imagine. Discover the biggest savings of the year on some of America's favorite vehicles during the Drive and Discover event going on now at Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Get America's best value, a new Grand Caravan for just $18,999 or a new Dodge Journey for just $16,999. Stop by today to shop the area's biggest selection of Ram trucks and save up to $8,000 on your new Ram. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. This Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix Minute is brought to you by Florida Leather Gallery. Your support during the Grand Prix Festival makes a difference. Community Haven for Adults and Children with Disabilities is one of five area nonprofit agencies receiving support from Suncoast Charities for Children and the Suncoast Foundation. Thanks to a recent grant, a new roof was installed on their adult training facility. 
Special project funding like this ensures program and service money goes directly to clients who need it the most. Florida Leather Gallery is celebrating the 4th of July with spectacular savings. Take 33% off hundreds of styles, experience, freedom of choice with a wide and wonderful assortment of leathers. Freedom from worry with our impressive collection of protected leathers and freedom from guilt as we proudly offer the lowest price guaranteed plus free delivery. It's all happening right now. Come celebrate with our Lexperts at our six Florida Leather Galleries. Uber is looking to make sure both drivers and passengers are safer on the roadways. The ride sharing service will try to keep a closer eye on drivers using smartphone sensors. The company is testing a new software that analyzes data on a driver's sudden acceleration, braking, and if they touch their phones when they drive. Daily reports of the driver's actions would then be sent to Uber. Let's get back to the kitchen now, see how lunch is coming along with Judy Gallagher. Judy, it smells smelling great already. You're getting all those seasonings, Scott. That's why you have cloves, you have nutmeg, you have cinnamon, you have a little curry in there, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. So first, let's work on our chicken, all natural chicken, okay? So what I did is I made some Moroccan seasoning, a combination of many different things. And then I'm gonna fill the cavity with lemon, and I'm gonna take some whole garlic. Okay, so what I basically did is took, took the cloves, peeled them, and then I'm gonna just stick them right into the chicken. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically put Greek yogurt in a Ziploc bag. This is so easy to do. So you're gonna do this the day before, or you could you know, do it in the morning if you're gonna use the chicken that evening. The one thing that's important to remember though is that you do need to rinse the chicken off from the yogurt when you take it out before you roast it in the pan because it's just going to be too thick. So we have a good covering in that. So now I can remove my gloves. And because I have extra lemon, I'll just go ahead and put that right in there. And then we're just going to basically massage that chicken a little bit, make sure all that yogurt gets in there. Perfect, okay? So we're going to zip that up. That goes into the refrigerator. Now I want to talk about the vegetables. You can use any vegetables you want. Today I picked from White Picket Produce. Look at these adorable little baby eggplants. They're so small. So I'm just going to put them in the last part of the roasting because they're going to cook, cook the quickest because they're so teeny. I have onion. I have summer squash. I have zucchini. I even have some t cherry tomatoes, grape tomatoes that can pop in at the end as well get in some delicious nutrients, but that will go in the last five minutes. I have beautiful rainbow carrots. So what I'm gonna do is basically just lay those carrots on the bottom at probably about 25 minutes before we're done. So when I come back, I'm gonna make the seasoning. I have the pan ready with a few cinnamon sticks, ready to put the chicken on top. So stay with me, it's gonna be really delicious in just a little bit. Stand out in your new wired Lexus. Lease a new 2016 Lexus ES350 for only $329 or enjoy 0.9% APR. Just $329 exclusively at Wild Lexus of Sarasota on Clark Road. Tonight on ABC7 News at 7. Some people look at ways to save money. That's probably not the best way to save money. I think flood insurance is important anywhere you live in Florida. More than two-thirds of Floridians do not have flood insurance. As we enter the heart of the hurricane season, find out what kind of coverage experts recommend here on the Sun Coast. I'm Alan Cohn. We'll have that story plus our roundtable discussion. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7, your Sun Coast News. We're here for you. Hurricane season is here, and Sun Coast weather can go from this to this in seconds. So when severe weather threatens, count on the official Sun Coast Storm Team at ABC7. We're armed with the most advanced weather technology so that we can bring you storm warnings faster and with more detail than ever before. Plus, we focus on the Sun Coast and track storms right down to your neighborhood. On air, online, and on your mobile device, turn to the official Sun Coast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. On your TV, on your computer, on your camera, on your smartphone, on your Apple Watch. And now you can get ABC7, your Suncoast News on Roku. 
Just go to mysuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab for a list of fast and free downloads that deliver ABC7, your Suncoast news on the go. At ABC7, it's all about being here for you. Introducing ABC7 News at 7 with award-winning investigative journalist Alan Cohn. In-depth reporting and debate on important issues and stories in our community with a featured topic of the day and a live roundtable discussion with community leaders and newsmakers. Plus a quick recap of the day's top stories and weather. ABC7 News at 7, weeknights. Now more than ever, we're here for you, Suncoast. Thanks to my volunteer, I am a better reader. Thanks to my volunteer, math seems simple now. Thanks to my volunteer, I discovered new career goals. I'm a volunteer for Sarasota County Schools, so I know I can make a difference. And you can too. Give an hour, change a life. Stand out in your new wild Lexus. Lease the bold new 2016 Lexus RX 350 for only 419 or enjoy 1.9% APR, just 419. Exclusively at Wild Lexus of Sarasota on Clark Road. Live from our studios on Florida's Sun Coast, this is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Sun Coast News, we're here for you. Welcome back. Topping our news this half hour, we're still waiting for, rem for remarks from President Obama on the attack in Istanbul. Both presumptive presidential nominees have weighed in. For Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, the fight against terror is a key issue in the race for the White House. President Obama is meeting with North American leaders in Ottawa, Canada today. While on the campaign trail, Donald Trump has been quick to seize the moment. It's bad, and we better get smart, and we better get tough. But we're not going to have much of a country left, okay? Trump at a rally in the battleground state of Ohio, reacting to the terrorist attack in Istanbul that killed at least 40 people. Trump signaling ISIS will be his top priority if elected. We have to take care of the ISIS situation. They are spreading like wildfire. Though Hillary Clinton appeared publicly at a town hall in California, she did not mention the attack at all. Let's think about what we're going to do to try to create more opportunities for you, your children, your grandchildren. Her campaign instead releasing a statement saying the attack strengthens our resolve to defeat the forces of terrorism. As an election year issue, the latest ABC News Washington Post poll shows Clinton recently moved ahead of Trump by more than 10 points after a closer result last month, perhaps in part due to her response to the Orlando attack. Not one of Donald Trump's reckless ideas would have saved a single life in Orlando. Clinton backing tougher gun control, Trump taking a hard stance on immigration. Last night, he reiterated his support for waterboarding our enemies. We have an enemy that's chopping off people's heads. Trump may hit the issue again this afternoon as he rallies voters in Maine. Clinton is off the trail today fundraising in California. Some new developments in the case of a Florida State University professor who was shot and killed two years ago. Police now say the case was a murder for hire that could have involved Professor Daniel Marks's ex-wife's family. Surveillance video shows Markle walking into a gym in July of 2014 on the day of his murder. A green sedan is seen driving around the parking lot. When Markle leaves, that same car follows him out of the parking lot. Police say the men inside that car are the suspects accused of killing him. Any case where you have surveillance of bad guys following a victim, it's, it's pre-planned. They're attempting to figure out the most opportune place to shoot him. Markle was shot in the head while still in his car. Police believe someone hired the men to kill Markle. They're still looking at his ex-wife's family as possible suspects. Police say the family wanted Markle's wife and the couple's two young children to move to South Florida, but their divorce stood in the way of that. In state news, Florida Secretary of State has received enough letters to trigger a poll on whether a special session should be held to toughen gun, gun laws. 46 letters from Democrats in the House and Senate were handed in yesterday. They're pushing for stricter laws to prevent known terrorists and those on the FBI watch list and no-fly list from legally obtaining a gun license. The legislation would also require an investigation of anyone removed from the list who wants to buy a gun. 
A federal judge will examine Florida's new law that places restrictions on abortion clinics. Attorneys representing Planned Parenthood will ask the judge to stop the law from going into effect on July 1st. The measure is similar to legislation in other states that has triggered legal challenges. In fact, on Monday, the U.S. Supreme Court struck down a Texas abortion law. State and federal laws already prohibit public money for abortion, but Florida's bill goes a step further by preventing state funds from going to any service by an organization that also provides abortions. It also requires doctors who perform abortions have admitting privileges at a nearby hospital. In California, whale watchers are on the lookout for a blue whale that was seen tangled up in hundreds of feet of fishing line. He was found Monday in distress. A whale watching boat spotted the whale entangled in commercial fishing gear and buoys. His tail was held down by all the lines. A disentanglement team was brought in to help. They made six attempts to free the animal before they had to give up for the night. It was painful to see this animal like it was. I won't forget it. The team says they remain hopeful they'll be able to find the whale again. The captain says whales are moving in closer to shore. So seeing whales tangled in this fishing gear, unfortunately, is becoming more common. Such a sad sight. Blue whales, of course, the biggest animal on earth. That's just sad. Yeah. That is just sad. I hope yeah. that they are going to be able to find him. Yeah. And that they will be able to free him. Oh, my Definitely. goodness. Oh, well, that's distressing. That is distressing, I have <laughs> to say. We had some showers this morning along the coastline. Right. And it was a bit of a surprise, I think, because we haven't seen that for a couple of days. So now we're starting to mm -hmm. see this pattern developing once again. We're going to see the same thing again tomorrow. We've got the showers right now east of I-7. But we've got plenty of sunshine along the coast at this hour. So we're looking at a temperature reading of 88 degrees, 61 percent humidity. Winds are coming in right off the Gulf at this point. And so far, we haven't seen any 90s on the map, but we're heading in that direction. So it looks as though we will get some rain a little bit later on, or uh, some, some hotter weather, uh, weather a little bit later on. We do have the showers beginning to pop up over the central part of the state. We also have plenty of showers out in the Gulf of Mexico, but light showers now at the Gulf and you can see some of these rains that are popping up are moving away from the shoreline and off towards the east so that's the direction that we're going to continue to see these rains developing and moving away from the shore we've got a temperature high of 90 degrees forecast for today and believe it or not there's only a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain so the rain chances are not going to be all that high we are going to top out at 90 with a 30 percent chance of showers for later today all right, Wendy, thank you. Transportation officials are looking into how to make a stretch of 8th Avenue West in Bradenton safer for pedestrians. The Florida Department of Transportation presenting a plan to make more than a half a million dollars in improvements to the four-lane road. The proposal includes adding several crosswalks, medians, landscaping, and fencing. A public hearing on the project will be held July 14th at 5 p.m. at Bradenton City Hall. And Manatee County receiving a grant for a new event meant to get more people out of their cars and on their feet and bicycles. The $5,000 grant will be used for Cyclovia, Bradenton. As part of the, the event, a major roadway in the county will be closed to vehicle traffic on the last Sunday of March or the first Sunday of April next year. It will allow the street to be used in other ways, such as biking, walking, or other activities. Well, for most kids, school is out for summer, but for an eight-year-old boy in Michigan, class is in session. For just 25 cents, Gabe Fulmerhauser is offering history lessons. Customers can sit at Gabe's stand and listen to some historical tidbits about topics like the Civil War and American presidents. The rising third grader says he has loved history since he was just three years old, so he wanted to share his passion with others. One of his things that he loves to do is to have veterans talk to veterans. So my hope would even be that some veterans come over and are able to share war stories with him. Not only for money to give people knowledge, not only for knowledge, just to change the world. Wow, Gabe says he wants to donate the money he makes to charity. He plans to keep offering his lessons all summer long. That's pretty incredible. Future president, maybe. Let's get back over to the kitchen and see how lunch is coming along with Judy Gallagher. Judy? Scott, that made my week. I just want to go over there and open up a lemonade stand next to him to help him. So let's get to the seasonings now. Traditionally, I'm going to use kosher salt or the Vicks garlic. 
that I love from the Spice and Tea Exchange on St. Armand's. I'm gonna add some curry. I'm definitely gonna do a few scoops of paprika now. Here's where you can add some heat. You can use hot paprika and then balance it out with a little smoked paprika. This is a great time for me to empty out my spice cabinet. So if I have little packets of seasoning, as long as I know they're for savory, it's great. So I often buy a packet mix for Moroccan seasoning. I'm gonna put some of that in there. And then I have some fennel seeds, a little bit of nutmeg, a little bit of cloves, and definitely a hint of curry. Now to make it a paste, I put some seasoning inside that chicken. Now I'm gonna make just a little olive oil, and we're gonna make a little bit of a paste. And you can just do it right in the bowl like I'm doing it. About two to three tablespoons of olive oil. That's also gonna really add moisture to the chicken. We have the chicken ready to go. Now what I always do is any type of poultry, I roast it for 20 to 30 minutes upside down. It's gonna get all the juices dripping down into the breast of the chicken. So let's do the paste on this. And then I'm gonna make some more paste for the top part when I flip it over. If I were to season everything and put the paste on now, the paste honestly is gonna melt away into the bottom of the pan. So I have two of those great fresh onions right there. Now the carrots and the squashes and the eggplant, like I mentioned, they're not gonna go in right away. So this is gonna go in the oven with extra lemon. It's loaded up with pieces of lemon and lots of garlic as it is. In about 30 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and add the carrots. And then about five minutes after that, I'll add the squash. 10 to 15 minutes, they'll add the baby eggplant because they really are teeny. And then right at the end, just to get that heat as the chicken is coming out of the oven, I'll add those tomatoes. So I think it's just about time to get it plated, ready to go, and it's gonna be ready for lunch with Wendy and Scott. Stay with me, we're coming back for a taste in just a few minutes in this wonderful sauce. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Rosaire from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. Hello, I'm Rebecca Vargas. And I'm Don Brennan. Drinking water is supposed to be good for you, but what if there's more in your glass than just H2O? Tomorrow on Good Morning Sun Coast, we'll show you what's in the water of 18 million Americans that's creating a health hazard. Wendy? And water, water everywhere. For us, there could be rain in the horizon. Tomorrow at 5 on ABC 7's Good Morning Sun Coast. We're here for you. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. This Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix Minute is brought to you by Florida Leather Gallery. This year's Grand Prix race will feature two full days of racing with more than 60 aquacross teams racing personal watercraft and 10 super stock race teams averaging speeds around 85 miles an hour. There will also be more than 25 powerboat teams racing at speeds approaching 100 miles an hour in the production class. And in the extreme class, the boats top 150 miles an hour. You don't want to miss this nonstop race action off Lido Beach. Florida Leather Gallery is celebrating the 4th of July with spectacular savings. Take 33% off hundreds of styles, experience, freedom of choice with a wide and wonderful assortment of leathers. Freedom from worry with our impressive collection of protected leathers and freedom from guilt as we proudly offer the lowest price guaranteed plus free delivery. It's all happening right now. Come celebrate with our Lexperts at our six Florida Leather Galleries. Well, we do have some showers that are forming well out in the Gulf of Mexico, and you can see them right here. They're sinking down to the south, but we're not likely to see those anytime soon right here across central Florida. We did get some showers early this morning, and those came on through during the very early morning hours. The Charlotte County area saw some heavier showers, and right now we're looking at rains developing over the central part of the state, moving on fa fairly quickly as they're dying out off towards the northeast. So you can see that 
developing and moving very quickly away. And nothing much is happening right here at the coastline. We've got a couple of pop-up showers, and that's what we're going to be experiencing for the rest of the afternoon. The dew point levels are high all around the state, and especially right here across West Central Florida, we're looking at that as well. And so we're going to continue to see the opportunity for rain just popping up here and there. That's going to be the rule for the rest of the afternoon. 88 degrees for us right now, 61% humidity. The wind's coming in right off the Gulf of Mexico, and it was those westerly winds that helped to bring about the showers that we saw very early today. We're looking at temperatures that have already hit the 90-degree mark, Jacksonville, Tallahassee. The rest of us, though, right here across our region, still, still no 90s, but we are expecting to see one of us is going to trip over that. You can see Lake Placid is just one degree away, and then we are looking at temperatures for the rest of us, mostly in the upper 80s right now. High pressure is sinking down to the south. It is the feature that is really affecting our forecast right now as it brings in these winds off the Gulf of Mexico on shore. And so that's going to help to set up showers for tomorrow morning again. We'll see the coastal showers developing during the morning hours, just as we did this morning. Afternoon inland showers will then form and continue to move off towards the east. And highs are expected to get right back up to around 90 degrees once again. As you can see, this is what's going to be taking place later this afternoon. We'll get these showers right here across central Florida. They're going to move off towards the east. Then by tomorrow morning, we start to see the showers developing right along the coastline, just as we did this morning. And then as the day wears on, we'll see those showers popping up eastward and moving off towards the east once again. So that's the pattern that we're going to be in for the next couple of days. We're going to keep our rain chances at around 20 to 30 percent chance of rain. And across the nation, we are looking at very hot, hot weather across the southwestern part of the country. We do have this cold front that's going to try and sink on down a little bit farther to the south and to east, but it's going to stall out. We're not expecting it to move into the state of Florida. Other showers are forming across parts of the Ohio Valley and moving off towards the north and east. The tropics are quiet. Isn't that always good to hear? So there's nothing forming out in the Atlantic. Even the Caribbean is quiet right now. The cloud cover that we've been seeing has been moving over land, so there's no opportunity for it to form and become any kind of a tropical system. And the ones that are in the Gulf of Mexico are following along a low-pressure trough right now, but there's nothing tropical in nature about it. For boaters, winds will start out out of the south and then shift around towards the southwest. Five to ten knots. Seas one to two feet. A light chop out on the bay. 88 degrees at the Gulf and 87 degrees for the Gulf water temperature. So things are certainly warming up there. And as you can see, over the next several days, we keep those rain chances to a 20 to 30 percent chance. We up those chances to 40 to 50 percent just in time for the holiday weekend. Scott? All right, Wendy, thank you. There's a new poster exhibit at the Ringling Museum. The Ringling's Alice Murphy shows us more. Circus Celebrities features portraits of talented circus performers and their fantastic accomplishments. These 21 posters offer us a glimpse into the extraordinary art of commercial lithography while enticing us with images of the men and women who entertained the masses in the early 20th century. One of the things that people seem to enjoy the most about seeing posters in our exhibits is the fact that you get to spend time with them. It's very different than advertising today and even than images of celebrity. We, we're shown fleeting images where they fly by on a computer screen or a television. But here, we realize that in the early 20th century, people walking down the road would stop and spend time and really look at a portrait of P.T. Barnum or look at Ernest Clark and read about his amazing triple twisting somersault. Mayworth is one of the most amazing equestrians to have performed in, in any circus ring. She came to this country in 1912 to perform in Barnum and Bailey's Circus, and she was performing a bareback riding act. She would take a running leap and jump onto the back of a galloping horse and then perform somersaults and twists and dances on the back of that horse. And she would even culminate her act by doing a somersault from the back of one horse to the back of another one. Circus posters were created to be very ephemeral. They were meant to be used and then basically left behind to be destroyed by the elements. And I think it's fascinating for our visitors to see these posters, some of which are almost 140 years old in this particular exhibition, and that they're still here and that they're still colorful. Also, in our world with photography and easy reproduction of exact images, I think it's a wonder to see a hand-drawn portrait created with such accuracy and such beauty and color.
This poster exhibition, Circus Celebrities, is a chance for our visitors to see some of the amazing portraiture that comes out of the commercial lithographs of the early 20th century. The circuses were, were primed to get their business by showing the audiences what attractions they were offering, and that often was specific people with wonderful stories. And these posters show many of those people. And with these circus posters, we see some of the earliest beginnings of images of celebrities, of people that would come to dominate the news headlines and be important impacts on communities as they traveled around the country. Entertainment News is next. Stay with us. Hurricane season is here, and so is the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. This essential resource arms you with vital information you need to protect your family and property when severe weather threatens the Suncoast, including how to create your readiness plan and survival kit, shelter locations, what to do with pets, and important phone numbers. Visit mysuncoast.com and download the official Suncoast Hurricane Guide from ABC7. Brought to you by the Florida Lottery. Don't miss the 32nd annual Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix Festival, June 25th through July 4th. This year's festival features a kickoff party at the Sarasota Yacht Club, boats on main block party, two days of aquacross and powerboat racing off Lido Beach, bayfront fireworks, and so much more. Produced by and benefiting Suncoast Charities for Children. For festival info and VIP race day viewing tickets, visit sarasotapowerboatgrandprix.org. Have you ever wondered what it's like to save a life? Find out by donating platelets at Suncoast Blood Bank. I'm Haley Wilgus, ABC7. Platelets aid in the clotting process and are vital in the treatment of cancer and surgical patients, trauma victims, and critically ill newborns. It's tough to keep enough on the shelves because they only last five days. To donate, call this number or visit scbb.org and you can help save a life. ABC7 congratulates Suncoast Blood Bank on 65 years of serving our community. Hurricane season is here. Are you prepared? ABC7 has the information you need. Access our special Surviving a Hurricane now. Learn how to prepare a readiness plan and survival kit. Know your evacuation route. Be prepared, Suncoast, when severe weather threatens. Access our special on our ABC7 app and all our live streaming platforms. Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and... The kitchen is where life happens. Minnesota Flooring now offers a wide variety of beautiful quality craft-made cabinetry to make sure the heart of your home reflects your style. Visit us today at our new kitchen and bath cabinetry locations. This Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix Minute is brought to you by Sarasota Ford. The Sarasota Powerboat Grand Prix originated in 1985 by a group of local businessmen, among them the race's brainchild, the late Gene Whip. What began as an annual picnic at the beach for children with special needs has expanded into a 10-day festival, raising $100,000 a year for Suncoast Charities for Children and generating an economic impact of $32 million for the area. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford because Sarasota Ford guarantees you our lowest price on every new Ford every day. Save on America's best-selling truck, 39 years running, the Ford F-150. Fusions, escapes, over 800 vehicles on-site or online, all on sale. Buy with 0% for 60 months. And now, get up to 2,000 trade assistance. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. Judy and I are back, and I have to tell you, I watched you make this dish from beginning to the end, and it only took an hour. It it's really isn't so that hard. It's so easy, and you marinate the chicken, you season it, you marinate it in the yogurt overnight. That step, done. Then you rinse off that yogurt, stuff the cavity with seasoning, lots of cloves of garlic and lemon, and then you make that paste. And look, I had to leave the roasting pan. This is just some of the juices oh, that are left over from that wonderful chicken. So you could put rice with that and then use Absolutely. that as your gravy over the rice. I, quinoa, <laughs> sweet potatoes would be delicious. Yes. Do a smash sweet potato and I saved you some roasted thank vegetables. You, thank you, because that I do love. But that it's I just, do love. And it makes a great presentation. You can even roast this like a beer can chicken style. So do the same Moroccan seasonings and put 
it over your beer can chicken holder and it's just going to give so much flavor and then the vegetables go on the bottom and white picket produce right at the door. I mean, I didn't go grocery shopping for this one. Nice. And yeah. the, the seasonings that you use, do you like to keep them for how long? If it's been a year, time to clean out your spice cabinet. You heard it from Judy. Mm -hmm. And of course, remember, you can always go to my uh, mysuncoast.com. We are going to click on the dining page. Thank you, Judy. <laughs> Scott, we're back over to you. Thank you so much. The Hollywood Walk of Fame is growing. The Hollywood Chamber of Commerce announcing the latest list of celebrities who will get their own stars on the sidewalk. The long list includes Amy Adams, Goldie Hawn, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Chris Pratt, Ryan Reynolds, and Mark Ruffalo. Small screen stars to be honored include Tyra Banks and Ava Longoria. In music, Ice Cube, John Legend, and the groups in sync, and New Edition will also get stars. Selfies are becoming more and more common, so when one dad thought his daughter was taking too many, he responded by taking a few of his own. Chris Martin says when he asked his 19-year-old daughter to tone it down on posting selfies, she didn't listen, so he said he'd show her what it looked like. He posted <laughs> selfies of his own, mocking his own daughter's pictures. They went viral with thousands of hits just in a few days. Chris says he's blown away by the response. <laughs> That's There's just so many bad things going on. It's just something dumb to laugh at, you know, so just take you away from it. So if I can make somebody laugh in, in Japan or Australia or whatever, you know, that's great. And his daughter says she thinks the pictures are so popular because it's something teens can laugh at their parents about. <laughs> How about that? That's wonderful. They're just not the same, are they? He's got a great you sense know, of humor. I, I have to agree with him, though. How many selfies yeah. do we need of somebody posing? Especially young people, they do have to be really careful. They do it all the time. I know. <laughs> I, it's a self-absorbed self world. Yeah. Spend more time in the kitchen. Yeah, there you go. I like <laughs> That's that. Right. Dude, get outside. Right. Just get outside. Yeah. There are people out there. Put there the really are. Away. Talk. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But I, I come from a different world, you know, when we didn't have yes, cell phones. We all I'm used do. to that world. <laughs> you took photos, and then it was weeks later That's before you saw them. Right? <laughs> That's yeah. so good. Don't, don't remind me. I know. <laughs> have a wonderful afternoon, everyone. We'll see you at 5. On your TV, on your computer, on your camera, on your smartphone, on your Apple Watch. And now you can get ABC7, your Suncoast News on Fire TV. Just go to mysuncoast.com and click on the mobile tab for a list of fast and free downloads that deliver ABC7, your Suncoast News on the go. At ABC7, our entire weathercast is dedicated to the Sun Coast, and now we bring it to you like never before with the all-new official Sun Coast forecast. Beach and boating forecast. The winds will be out of the northwest at 10 knots. Now, with the most advanced graphics and technology, we bring you weather where you live, pinpointing right down to your neighborhood. Zooming into the Sarasota Bayfront, the all-new official Sun Coast forecast, only on ABC7, your Sun Coast news. We're here for you.